How are we doing, everybody? Welcome tonight to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. I'm in a different spot. I'm here in live in New York, hanging out. I'm at my mother's house. If you lose the stream or we have internet issues, I apologize. I was having some internet issues tonight. With it's a little bit different of a setup here at my mom's house. Um, her internet is not the greatest, so um, um, trying to uh, trying to make everything work here. So I uh, appreciate you guys coming in. Um, what I want to do first before we get started tonight, I want to say hi to everyone in the chat here. I'm going to take a look. Um, right now we have Joshua Esplund is here. Sean Moore. How you doing, man? Uh, let's see. Texas Owls in the house. How you doing, buddy? The Dan Trout is here. Mike Snook. Uh, Nicholas Villaggio. Uh, Carl H. Kenneth Kennelty. Scotty from my bourbon journey. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Um, let's see here, Peter White, and oh, everyone's here. Awesome, great to see you. Um, like I said, if you, I might, you might experience some slowdown here and stuff, guys. My mom's internet is not the best, uh, so I am, I'm trying here. Nice to see you guys. Christine Deems is here. Hey, Mike from Bourbon Shenanigans in the house. How you doing? Um, all right, great. So. What we're going to do tonight, guys, is uh, have a really cool show lined up as long as everything holds out here. Uh, my first bottle we're going to be opening up tonight is uh, is this one. It is called the Old Rippy um, out of bourbon. Uh, I'm sorry, out of Kentucky, obviously, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is batch one. This is the one of the first releases from Campari's new bourbon line. This also goes with Bond and Lillard, a couple of other ones. Um uh, on the way. Um, then we have, uh, let's see. So what I found interesting about this bourbon is that it is actually uh, from Wild Turkey. It's the same exact mash bill. It's uh, the, it was, it's sourced from Wild, it's sourced from Wild Turkey. So I love Wild Turkey, so I figured this might be a cool one to try out. So how are we doing here? Let's see who else is dropping in. Brian Brennicky, how you doing, man? William Davilar, cheers, buddy. How are you? Um, let's see. Oh, Jim Shannon, how are you doing? Nice to see you, buddy. Um, so, so even though Jimmy and Eddie Russell weren't involved in creating this old Rippy, um, it's fairly interesting that this is the same proof as Wild Turkey decades. So this comes in um, at fifty-two percent, fifty-two percent alcohol. So it's got a really nice kick to it, which I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna pop this open real quick and let me new, let me know what you guys are sipping on in the chat. If I haven't said it yet, happy holidays! Glad you guys are uh, glad you guys are here joining me here in New York. All right, well that had a nice pop to it. So, old Rippy. I don't have my regular glasses here, so I'm uh, I'm just going with the glasses my mother has. <laughs> Let's see, checking in. Trevor Wilson's in the house. How you doing, man? New Menium. What's up, buddy? Nice to see you. Um, let's see, Richie Z's in the house. How you doing, man? Nice to see Richie Z. Always, always glad to see you, buddy. Uh, yep, Scotty's here. All right, great. So, so uh, old Rippy. Uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, this is basically from Wild Turkey, but this is through the new Campari, uh, the Campari line of bourbons. This goes along with the Blond the Bond and Lillard. Um, the mash bill is 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley, which is the general wild turkey mash bill, as I mentioned. This is aged in new charred oak, aged six years, but this is also a mix of six, eight, and 12 years old bourbon. So it's got a good mix of bourbons in there, kind of like a, a high-end wild turkey would be. Um, the price for this is 50 bucks. So... Um, like I said, I was really curious how this was. A buddy of mine lent this bottle to me. He said, crack it open on your live stream, and let's talk about it. So um, let's see. We got, oh, Sean Moore's drinking Pikesville. Nice. William Davilar, Yellowstone Select. Uh, hey, Terry Garcia's in the house. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, Grover. Yeah, Grover's in the background. Grover is uh, right over here hanging out. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's go into the uh, the color here. So just a nice light caramel. Um, good looking color on the nose here. It definitely, well, right off the bat on the nose, it definitely smells like a wild turkey, considering the mash bill. But there's there's definitely some older age stuff in here. Definitely 
definitely oak and caramel, a lot of that going on. There's almost a, um, I'm getting a banana kick in here too. That's real interesting. Almost like uh, like bananas foster, like bananas covered in caramel with the brown sugar. It's kind of nice. Mmm. Wow, that's it. Really smells good. Um, yeah, this really smells good. I can't wait to get. I'm now. I'm curious if it tastes like uh, like wild turkey a little bit. So, I'm um, gonna go into the to the first sip. All right, guys. Cheers. Happy holidays. Here we go. Mmm. Wow, that is really oaky, really spicy. Super. It's almost like one of those uh, double, um, one of those uh, those toasted, like a Michter's toasted barrel uh, bourbon, almost. Really nice. Mmm. That's really good. It's got. Um, Man, it's got that banana kick on the on the pot a little bit too. You would think there's like some uh, some some Jack Daniels mixed in there, but mm. uh, William Davilar, the ABV on this is um, fifty two percent alcohol, so fifty two percent. It's got a nice uh, it's got a nice uh, burn to it. You could definitely taste some age in there. You can definitely taste that 12 year old, that influence in there. It's it's a really nice mix of bourbons. This is really good. This is surprisingly very delicious, I must say. I'm really liking this. Let me go for one more sip here. Wow, it's it's going back and forth from sweet and then spicy and then sweet again and then spicy. It's like going back and forth it's kind of all over the place but i'm kind of enjoying that it's really nice mm. yeah for 50 bucks i mean you're getting some nice aged whiskey in here be quiet boss that's my dog <laughs> he, he came with he came with me to new york so now he's uh, now he's barking at the neighbors um all right, guys, so uh, I want to show you some cool things that I was able to pick up while I was here in New York. I got very lucky while out bourbon hunting here in New York. It was awesome. So these are some updates that are coming, uh, some uh, some reviews that are coming soon. So first one up, uh, I got the Kentucky Owl Rye, the 11-year. This is batch two. I was able to grab this. Uh, I've been kind of waiting for a bottle of that. Um, I also got this guy, which is the... Michter's 10, single barrel. Um, I had a pour of this in Kentucky recently, and it was absolutely amazing. So to get to finally find a bottle of this and get it, and actually paid MSRP, I was super psyched. Um, uh, I also picked up uh, this guy. So this is the Clyde Mays Cast Strength 10-Year Alabama Whiskey. Um, been hearing so many amazing things about this. I cannot wait. Um, let's see. Uh, also, the crown jewel that I found is this guy, which is the Old Fitz Nine Year Bottled and Bond. I found this at retail, guys. No joke, retail, a hundred bucks. When this came out, I was freaking out, and she put it on the counter, and I grabbed it. So, really awesome stuff. Uh, the MSRP now for the ten, Mike. That is. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, the, um, that would be the, I recently required a bottle of the blend straight from the barrel. So that one is, it's on its way. It's coming. So I'm excited to get my hands on that one. So a lot of exciting stuff coming guys in the new year. Really psyched. So it should be great. Oh yeah, my yeah. Sorry guys, my the internet here is terrible in my mom's house. So if I go in and out, I apologize. It keeps going like a super great signal, and then it just drops to a low one, a terrible one. So, um, so what we're gonna do, guys, uh, here? I want to get into a couple of news stories real quick. Uh, there wasn't a lot going on, so um, 
let's go into the whiskey news tonight. Um, so the uh, first story up here that we got, and I'm sure you guys have heard about this. I've been talking about it a little bit on my channel. Is the um, uh, actually which uh, which one do we got here? All right. Well, with the um, with the uh, with my internet the way it is right now, I don't think I could do the the screen switching. But uh, I definitely want to talk a few things about the Booker's 30th anniversary, which was uh, the special edition of Booker's uh, celebrates the brand's 30th anniversary. The whiskey is a combination of 70% nine year old and 30% 16 year old uh, bourbon. Selected by master distiller Booker No Son Fred. As always, the bourbon is uncut and unfiltered. The bottle for this Booker's, which is more than limited as usual, uh, includes a special silver wax and it's packaged in a box made from old beam rick houses. So um, the that um, that Booker's 30th anniversary bottle, I'm definitely on the lookout for. I know it's tough to get. I think Sean, I think you got one, right? Um. Let me see here. Uh, one other whiskey I wanted to mention was the Wyoming Whiskey Barrel Strength Bourbon. Um, I don't know if you guys are a fan of Wyoming whiskey, but this one is coming out. Um, this is the second Barrel Strength Bourbon release out of uh, Wyoming whiskey. This is from Barrel 3242. Just 50, doll, uh, 50 bottles will be available for purchase, which is crazy if you think about it. Um, it's, it the last time it was released, it re uh, received a score of 92. Um, from Whiskey Advocate. I remember that part. It's supposed to be really good stuff. Um, if you get your hands on a bottle, good luck. Um, it is the price at $200 a bottle. So it's pretty steep. Uh, the facts here, it's 64.35%. Uh, so that is a really high ABV. Um, it's a non-H dated, but it's coming out. It's out uh, in December. Uh, let's see here. The angel on the tree is huge. Yes, it's very huge. <laughs> I was just like looming over me, like don't drink too much. So, uh, Mike Snook. Oh, he's getting one Friday. Oh, I love me some Wyoming. Oh, Mike Snook. Are you talking about the? Uh, you talking about the Bookers? Or are you talking about the Wyoming? Uh, Captain, make it happen. He loves himself some. Oh, I didn't say hi to you yet. How you doing, man? Uh, whiskey in the six. Oh, honestly, you're in my head. I was going to do my live in front of Christmas tree tomorrow. Great minds think alike, I guess. Plus the Italiano connection. There you go. How you doing, Rob? If you guys haven't uh, checked out Rob, go check him out. Also, my bourbon journey. Go check him out. Go check out my bourbon finder on Instagram. Sean finds incredible bottles. It's like one of the luckiest dudes ever. <laughs> Mike Snook. Oh, Booker Story. He's gonna get. He's that's what he's gonna get. That's awesome. Nicholas Villaggio, a lot of stores in New York and New Jersey have Wyoming barrel picks at barrel strength for $50. Oh, well, that sounds much more, uh, much more like attainable. So I'll be on the lookout for that, man. Thanks. That's a good to know. Uh, okay, so another uh, cool release that's coming out, guys, is the uh, barrel bourbon. So I know you guys know uh, barrel craft spirits. Um, they have their fancy, uh, you know, kind of oval-shaped bottles. Uh, they're coming out with a really interesting whis whiskey. These guys are doing a lot of different things uh, with different aging. They had an Affinity bottle release. They released a 15-year bourbon uh, recently, just this month. That's been pretty hard to get. I think that that's priced at about $250 to $300. Um, so they're calling it Barrel Dovetail. So the Dovetail, it's really interesting. So obviously, it's a source whiskey. We know barrel uh, sources. Um, they are non-age dated. This comes in at 61.45% ABV. Uh, now, this is a limited edition release. So, th now, listen to this, guys. This is what's inside of it. It's a 10-year-old whiskey distilled in Indiana, finished in Dunn Vineyards Cabernet Sauvignon barrels, and an 11-year bourbon distilled in Tennessee, finished in black strap rum casks and late bottled vintage port pipes. So, really not sure what that means, but... <laughs> Um, it's, uh, it sounds super unique and it's actually only going to be $90, which is one of their, usually what their price point is at. So it's pretty good. Um, uh, so their philosophy of blending is to create intentionally unique flavors. It took a year for this blend to come together. So it's been commingling for about a year in the barrel and, uh, that's what they got. So that's coming out, uh, this month. So if you guys really love what barrel does, look out for barrel and around the label, it says dovetail, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. 
May the force. <laughs> Uh, Dan Trout, Jason, Sean asked if you were excited about Cream of Kentucky. I am very excited for Cream of Kentucky. Yes, I have uh, acquired a bottle of that as well. So um, that is on its way. So I'm very excited about that one. Uh, that is the first bottle from Jim Rutledge and his new uh, distillery. Um, you know, former master distiller over at uh, Four Roses uh, before Brent Elliott took over. So it was a uh, help pick, I think, by Fred Minnick. Uh, the flavors are supposed to be phenomenal. So... I am super excited to get my bottle of that. Um, let's see. Eric, it is just me or does it seem like the mic is popping? Oh, is it popping a lot? Maybe it's too loud. Let me uh, lower it a little bit here. All right. That might, be, oh, that might get better, guys. All right. Sorry if it's popping. That might get better. Uh, and last but not least, guys, for the whiskey news, we have the Stranahan Snowflake Batch 21 uh, from Mount Elbert. That's, that's what they're calling it. Uh, if you guys don't know Stranahan's, they are a Colorado American whiskey maker. They do uh, a lot of different releases, um, but their Snowflake is probably their most famous. Guys wait on, you know, they wait online overnight and they just wait for this stuff constantly. It's amazing. Um, so this is a 47% ABV uh, release right now. Extremely liberally, uh, limited. It's already sold out. I've seen it on the second day already, going for hundreds of dollars. Um, so the one that they did for this release, this is a, a blend of their Stranahan's whiskeys, their American whiskeys, uh, aged for two years in new charred oak casks, and then they were transferred to a variety of finishing casks, including Syrah, Muscat, Merlot, Old Vine Zinfandel, Port, Madeira, Chocolate Stout, and Rum casks. So all these finishings and all these different blendings they put together in this one bottle, and then you have the Stranahan Snowflake. I always hear amazing uh, things about it. Um, oh, now it is too low. Let me go up higher here. All right. I'll try that. Maybe I'm too close to it, Eric. Thanks for letting me know. All right. Raising it up. Raising it up. All right. Hope you guys can hear me now. Um, I think it was popping. Maybe I was too close. I tend to lean in too much to it, so... Hopefully that's better, guys. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, 1.5 minutes. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Sorry about the lag, guys. It's uh, the you know it's the internet here. I'm sorry again. Uh, but uh, one other quick announcement I wanted to make, guys. Uh, this is something that I've been working on for a couple, probably last couple weeks. Um, really trying to grow the channel, uh, get more guests on, as you guys know, as I mentioned in the past. Um, so what I've done here is uh, create a Patreon, as a lot of you guys know about. Um, so this is now my, uh, my Patreon stop, my Patreon page. Uh, so if you're enjoying the channel, want to help me support some more content, um, try to upgrade some equipment, do stuff like that, uh, try to get some more trips to Kentucky, which I plan to do, um, acquire more bottles, uh, acquire, um, definitely acquire some, some, uh, more technology upgrades like laptops and stuff. I really want to make the, make the show seem like it's a, not just a YouTube channel, but a full on, almost like a television channel. So that's what I, that's what my, my future plans are. So I have three different tiers. You guys can join. Uh, I want to say thank you to my first two patrons that I've had so far. That is Scott from My Bourbon Journey. You guys know him. has an amazing channel. And also Christine Deems, who I saw in the chat earlier. I don't know how she found it, but um, she was uh, uh, she kind of jumped in. I saw she was a patron immediately before I even told anyone about it. So thank you, Christine. There's a lot of different uh, you know different perks you guys will get. I'm planning on doing uh, some giveaways. Everyone in certain tiers can get a t-shirt. Um, I also plan on the top tier. You guys have seen my mash and drum flasks with the uh, the logo on it. So that's going to be a um, uh, that's going to be a giveaway as well for the top tier. Uh, also, I'm planning on having uh, these things called drum sessions, which is basically going to be a private video where you guys, the patrons, could just come in, sit down, talk, have a drink with me. And uh, even for that session, I'm going to send you some samples from my private collection to uh, sit down and taste with me during the, uh, the drum sessions. And then what we can do is kind of talk about the future of the channel, where you guys think it could go, what you want it to be. So if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing and you feel like, uh, you know, 
uh, supporting the channel. It's up to you. You could submit as much as a dollar, as little as a dollar. And uh, I kind of started low on the tiers, so it's really up to you guys. I really appreciate it. So, um, uh, so that's it. So that's my that's my one uh, that's my one uh, um, you know plug there. So thanks. Um, let's see. Uh, all the whiskey friends in the house, how you doing? Uh, Moose seventy six. The Stranahan's cast ring is a great dram indeed. Uh, cost me about ninety dollars Canadian. Okay, cool. <clears throat> all right, guys. Now. <clears throat> As I as I mentioned kind of in the preview uh, of the channel, I did have a I had a plan tonight to do a blind tasting of some of my some of my favorite budget bourbons that I like to go to to kind of see which I like the best. So tonight, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be blind tasting uh, four different uh, bourbons. Uh, so tonight's contenders are uh, Ancient Age. That's going to be the first one. Um, Evan Williams. Uh, Black Label, uh, Early Times, Bourbon. Now, these are all bottom shelfers, but I think they're kind of good stuff. So, And the Benchmark 8-Year. So we're going to be blind tasting all four of those and see which one comes out on top. So it should be pretty fun. So I've already poured them here. Uh, I have four glasses. One, two, three, four. I don't know which one is in which, but we're going to do our blind tasting and see how this uh, shakes out. Uh, let me move this here. Uh, oh, Christine Deems, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Jason Coase, I was eyeballing some Stranahan's Cast Strength last week. Guess I should jump. I've loved what I've had from them. Yeah, they Stranahan's makes great whiskeys. Definitely love the stuff. Uh, Mike Snook, no, the H and A. This is not the ten star H and A. This is just a regular, straight up H and H. Um. I'm trying to think. I feel like there's something else I'm missing here. Oh, one other bottle uh, that I got. And uh, I'm going to be giving away uh, samples of this tonight, guys. I'm going to give away two samples of this, um, like I normally like to do, uh, especially given the holiday season. And, um, you know, I was able to acquire a second bottle of this. Uh, actually, my mom did some whiskey hunting and found me another one. So because of that, I want to give away a couple samples of it. So... I'm going to be away uh, two samples tonight of um, Weller 12. So two winners tonight. We'll get Weller 12. We'll do a little trivia later, uh, and then we'll see who wins uh, two samples. So hope you guys are excited for that, especially for anyone that's never had it. Um, let's see. Let's see. Go on the chat. Just check in. Uh, let's see. Okay. Next time you're in Kentucky, there is some bottom shelf bottled and bond exclusive to Kentucky or about the same price as AA and much better in my opinion. I will check that out, Sean Moore. Nice. Okay. So, uh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, ever, whenever I go there, I just figured I want to do some more, some, uh, some bottom shelfers that aren't just exclusive to Kentucky. So this way everyone can kind of grab these if they needed. But I have seen some exclusive ones over there. There's some definitely some good cheap bourbon in Kentucky. So it should be cool. What's up, Santa? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, man. Got to be Santa Claus a little bit. So Whiskey Santa, if, if there's such a thing, I want to meet him. Oh, maybe it's me. Whiskey Santa, yeah. I, I can deal. I could, I could go with that. So um, as I'm getting ready to do the blind uh, tasting here, guys, uh, just a couple things. Um... Uh, whiskey Advocate released their top twenty uh, whiskeys, and I always I'm always curious uh, about this uh, this list that they put out every year, just to kind of see how it stacks up. What I think, and you know, while I'm not a super you know Scotch God yet or into it, I there were some a lot on here that I knew, uh, but I was really curious of the bourbons that that came through here uh, and made it to the top because I did agree with some of the the selections. Um, um, so I, I printed out the list here, guys. So just to run through, you know, I'll run through the top 10 real quick uh, from what they selected. So top 10 uh, whiskey advocate, top 20 uh, whiskeys of the year for 2018. So they did. Uh, so number 10 was the Bellmead Cast Strength uh, Reserve, which I just reviewed and I thought it was phenomenal. So I can't really argue with that one. Uh, number nine was a 1792 Bottled and Bond Bourbon, which I thought was great. Um, eight was the Glendronic 15, which I know a lot of people sought out when they re-released it this year. Uh, number seven was the Lafroy 10 Cast Strength, which was batch 10. Haven't had that one. 
Uh, number six was the Armoric Double Maturation, which is a French sherry cask whiskey made in France. So it's called Armoric. I've never even seen this stuff. Um, uh, so uh, I'm not sure. So uh, I'm not sure if anyone in the chat has had it. I've never even seen it. Uh, so it's called Armoric, A-R-M-R-O-R-I-K, Double Maturation French Sherry Cask Whiskey. I thought it sounded pretty interesting. Uh, number five, a Crown Royal makes it in the top five. Uh, Crown Royal Noble Collection, 13-year-old Blender's Mash. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, uh, any of you uh, Canadians out there, any of you have tried this, let me know how good it is. The, again, the Crown Royal Noble Collection, 13-year-old Blender's Mash. Uh, number four is the Port Charlotte 10-year heavily peated Isla Single Malt from Brooklady. I would love to try that stuff. I'm a huge fan. It's one of my new favorite distilleries. Uh, all right, guys, here come the top three. Uh, number three, the Jack Daniels Heritage Barrel, which I thought was a phenomenal, phenomenal release by Jack Daniels. If no one has ever had it, it's absolutely incredible. I love it. Um, number two was the Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye. That one was a surprise for me because even though I thought it was really good, I thought as it sipped down, it just lost a little something. It got way too sweet, and I lost that rye spiciness that I love uh, from it from the beginning of the bottle. So if they tried it from a brand new bottle, maybe that was a um, maybe that was a factor. But I just felt like it didn't stand the test of time as I sipped on it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, and number one, number one was a Japanese whiskey, Nika from the Barrel. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, I, I reviewed that. That was one of my first reviews, and I absolutely love this stuff. Um, I, I love it even more now that I've gotten into scotch more. Uh, you definitely can appreciate all the flavors that are in there. There's there's over 100 different grain whiskeys that are all batched together in that stuff. There's a lot of flavor to be found in there, and everybody I talk to pulls something different out of it. I always thought that was pretty interesting. Um, all right, let me go through the chat here. Uh, Eric Waite, I just bought their number one Nika from the barrel. Nice, Eric. Let me know what you think. I don't know if you've opened that yet. Uh, Whiskey in the Six, give yourself credit. You're doing awesome. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that, Rob. Uh, let's see. The Lafroy Cast Strength. Uh, let's see. Jason Coates. Uh, okay, I love Magnus stuff. Yeah, I got to get a bottle of the, uh, the Joseph Magnus. Jim Shannon, I need JD Heritage. Oh, Jim, yes, you do. Go grab it. Find it. Um, let's see. Texas Al, open it. Oh, the Magnus pick. Leave me one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, he's recording the Nika from the Barrel this weekend. So, awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that, Eric. That should be cool. Um, uh, Rob, did you get your Heritage Barrel yet? I know you were I know you were expecting one. Let me know if, you're, uh, if you got one yet. Um, uh, that's Rob from uh, Whiskey in the Six. All right, guys. Let's go into the blind tasting here. Uh, now, as I said, I'm doing the, these four these four uh, bottom shelf bourbons. Uh, let's see. Eric, wait. The bottle of the Nika from the barrel looks weird. The top looks off and it has a cheap screw. Yeah, it does. It has a cheap screw cap on top. It's It's very strange. Uh, oh, Rob got it. Oh, Jeremy picked it up for him today. Awesome, buddy. Cool. Can't wait for you to try it. All right. So let me turn over my piece of paper here. And uh, if you guys have any questions during the during the blind tasting, you know, go for it. Uh, can't wait to uh, to get into these and see which uh, see which one of these bourbons come out on top. The reason why I wanted to do this is uh, I get a lot of people asking me, "Hey, Jay, what's a what's a great bourbon?" You know, I don't even want to spend twenty dollars on a bourbon. You know, more than twenty. So, you know, a lot of these bourbons here on the bottom shelf, you know, you can get them for eleven, twelve, sometimes fifteen bucks. So I was curious. So I picked some of the four that I kind of always knew and kind of went to, especially H and H. I always thought that was kind of a good one for the money for me. Um, so uh, it's kind of one of my first loves, and definitely the Evan Williams Black uh, Black Label. I always thought that was a great one. Um, let's see here. Uh, yes, uh, I did get that. That was another bottle I acquired. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rob. Uh, I got the lot 40 cast strength. So I cannot wait to review that one. And guys, if you're wondering, I am planning on doing a video for my top whiskeys of 2018. 
just with all these new ones that I've acquired, I want to taste them before I can make a distinction of what my favorites are. I have pretty much a top five that I have in my head, but until I try these, I don't really want to. Uh, I, I can't. I don't feel like I could do a fair, um, uh, kind of a fair top five yet, because uh, there's a lot of whiskeys out there that released in 2018, and there keeps more keeps just keeps coming out. Uh, but I think I'm at a good spot now where I could try some of these and make a good distinction on um, what. Uh, what I think uh, my best for 2018 are. Um, let's see. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to go to my first one here. And let's see. Let's see what we got. This one smells like cherry cough syrup. <laughs> really heavy cherry cough syrup on that one. Now, to go over, these are all... All three of these are, well, three of them are 40% ABV, except for the Evan Williams. The only one, the Evan Williams is 43%. So it's got three more percent ABV points on it. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to, to smell that in the nose, but we'll see. Yeah, this is pure cherry cough syrup on the nose. Very, very interesting. Let me go on for a sip here. And it tastes like cherry cough syrup. <laughs> That's like uh, cherry uh, cherry Robitussin. <laughs> wow. But it's actually finishing a lot sweeter than I thought it would. It's kind of nice uh, on the finish. The front of the palate is not very pleasant. Mm. Yeah. It's got a weird cherry crazy flavor in there. Not sure. It's it's pretty good. I, I I would think this is one of those as you sip on it, it just kind of goes away and kind of smooths out. But let me go into the second one here. Uh, the Dan Trout, Jason. Where did you find the Lot Forty? Uh, well, I was lucky enough. I did a I did a trade with uh, with Rob Whiskey in the Six. I traded a Jack Daniel's Heritage Barrel for a Lot Forty Cast Strength. So um, we traded bottles, and um, yeah, so I was able to get one, and I'm super excited to try that one. All right, number two here. All right, so this one has a more traditional bourbon nose. This is corn, uh, caramel sweetness. Definitely smells young. It's not aged very long. It's got a little bit of hemp. Uh, it's got it got some citrus in there. It's got a nice orange kick. Yeah, but mostly mostly just corn, caramel, very pleasing nose, very simple, bourbon, straightforward. Let's go in for the uh, sip on this one. That one's not bad. That one has more of a uh, funky aftertaste to it, though. It tastes like a um, like an old dusty. It has like a weird funky grassy uh like a like an earthy note to it really interesting mm. okay now it's getting better as you sip on it that's getting pretty nice that's just kind of staying even with the caramel the the vanillas you get a little bit of oak in there so there is there is a slight hint of age in there that one's doing pretty well i can get on board with that one i like that one I'll take a swig of water. What's going on in the chat, guys? Uh, Moose76, did you hire a mule to smuggle it into Canada? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, all right, let's get into number three. This one just basically smells like straight corn whiskey. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm writing down some notes here, guys. Yeah, straight up corn whiskey. I don't really taste a lot of age on there. A lot, very astringent, very alcohol forward. Definitely number two has the nicest nose. Yeah, this one has a, this one's very, very, it's it's surprising how much alcohol, oh, excuse me, how much alcohol is coming from the glass given it's only 40 proof. I'm sorry, 40% alcohol. All right, I'm going to go for the sip on this one. Oh, that is not good. Jesus, Lord, what is that aftertaste? 
Oof. Yeah, that has like, it just has no flavor. You get corn on the front, and then it just dies out and just becomes alcohol. Well, that one's rough. I don't know what that one is. I'll actually take the, the cherry cough syrup over that one. Yeah, not liking that one. <laughs> Christine Deems, what a face. Yeah, exactly. That one was rough. Oof. As my uh, grandfather used to say, oof, I'm male. Which is like, oh, I'm sick. All right. Let's go in for the last one, guys. Oh, now this has a nice nose. This is, uh, this is, this is your caramel vanillas. Definitely some, a uh, little bit of orange cherry flavor in there. This one's got a nice nose on it. Oh, so far. That's pretty good. Oh, I like that. Oh, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of a hint of licorice in there. Maybe from, uh, that could be maybe a higher rye in there. I'm not sure. Pretty good. All right, let me go in for, uh, for another sip here. Oh, man, that's disappointing. <laughs> you know why? Because the nose was so good on that one, but or it was probably the best nose of all four, but it didn't translate to the palate. It was very flat, very, very flat tasting. Not a lot going on there. Yeah, it's just very, very, there's no, it's, it, I don't know how to, how do I explain it? There's no like sweet or oak that goes one way or the other. It's just very flat. It's just like all the flavors are just kind of mixed together and they're all like kind of set at a very low volume and it's just kind of even keel. It doesn't really go anywhere. So yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Um, wow. One and three are out. <laughs> William Davila, I don't know the. Um, I think the. I don't know I gotta. I gotta go back through one more time. Definitely three was awful. So three is probably my fourth place. Um, I think. In, I think the leader in the clubhouse right now is number two. But number one actually wasn't bad. Once you get past that cherry cough syrup flavor, it's not terrible, but it's pretty good. So all right, guys. Uh, what I want to do before I go through them again real quick, let's do our first giveaway tonight. Now, please be uh, just keep in mind, guys, when uh, the giveaway is that whoever wins tonight, uh, keep in mind I won't be able to ship them out uh, this week. It'll have to be next week when I get back home. Uh, but I will have your emails and your contact info. But again, uh, tonight we are giving away two samples of uh, Weller 12. So if you guys have never had Weller 12 or have never been able to acquire a bottle, uh, you're going to get two samples of it. Uh, well, each person will get a sample. So um, so I have uh, I have questions kind of set up here to do uh, for... We're going to do some Christmas movie trivia. I know that's always fun. So my uh, my two favorite Christmas movies, and I know a lot of people have you know a good amount of them. Um, but I think my two favorites are uh, number one being... Well, my number one movie is actually called The Night They Saved Christmas. But not many people have seen that one. So, if I had to go into another one, my second favorite is A Christmas Story, and then number three is uh, probably probably National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> I absolutely love that movie. <laughs> it cracks me up every year. I can't, like, not watch it. So, um, oh, he said It's a Wonderful Life. Nice. Oh, Texas Owl, Booker's opened the door into bourbon for me, and I'd love to try Yeah, Texas Owl, I agree with that. Booker's is the is the bourbon that opened the door for me, too. That Once I tried that, I didn't know bourbon can have so much flavor to it. And, you know, and I wish I really found out what Booker's that was that I had at that bar that night. I just I didn't know, like, the names and that they had different types of uh, aging and all that stuff. I just I had no idea. So I wasn't able to – I wish I'd found that one because I would have loved to go, like, try to find a bottle. Um, I just knew it was Booker's, but I didn't know like, you know, the batch or the year or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, Carl H. Die Hard is a bit, oh, Die Hard's a good one. Die Hard is a good call out. Yeah, I just watched that the other night too. Die Hard's a great one. National Lampoon's for sure. Yep. Godzilla vs. Santa Claus. <laughs> is that a real movie, Eric? <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one. So, um, 
All right, so for all you uh, for all you Christmas movie fans out there, so the first the first uh, question is going to be about uh, uh, Christmas Story. Now they play this for twenty four hours on Christmas Eve, on, usually on uh, TNT or TBS. Uh, it's on a lot. So um, uh, I guess the question I don't want to make it too hard, but I guess the first one to answer in the chat. Uh, if anyone can remember, uh, what city did the what city did the family live in on on a Christmas story? Where were they from? Jason Coates, I have a lot of love for Elf. I love Elf. That's a great movie too. Let's see. Uh, yeah, the first remember, guys. I might be a little bit delayed, so if it comes up a little bit differently in the, you know, in the uh, in the chat. You know, I'm sorry from what I see as opposed to what you're seeing. Uh, let's see. Captain Make It Happen got it. It is Cleveland. Good job, man. Cleveland, where I live now in Ohio. I live in Columbus, but Cleveland's about two hours away. So, Captain Make It Happen, you get the first dram of Weller 12. Now, Captain Make It Happen, let me know in, um, in the chat. Is this something you've had or that you have had before? Because if not... Um, I could contact you and send you something else if you want, but I know Weller 12 a lot of people haven't had or haven't gotten a chance to try. Um, so let me know. Uh, well, I'll contact you. I have your I have your info. So I'll reach out to you and uh, we can let me know. So that'd be cool. So if you still want the Weller 12, Captain, let me know. Um, oh, Eric Waite, the Christmas Story Trivia. What is the name of the Lone Ranger's nephew's horse? Oh man, what did he say in the movie that it was? Oh goodness gracious, that's gonna drive me nuts, Eric. Thank you so much. If any of you guys have checked out Eric Waite's channel, go go uh, go check his channel out. He does uh, whiskeys, he does bourbons, he does a lot of different stuff. Uh, he is the ultimate whiskey uh, whiskey geek. I love watching him. Uh, let's see. Um, Oh, Victor. That's what it was, Eric. It was Victor. Thank you. That was going to drive me nuts all night. Good job, Victor. All right, let me, uh, let me run through this blind one more time, guys. Let's see here. So A was the cherry cough syrup one. Now it's kind of become even out. It's actually pretty good. I could get down with A. A is not too bad. Um... Or number one. I'm not sure if it's A. I have them labeled A, B, C, D. I'm not sure what's what. Uh, but number one, the cherry cough syrup one. That's okay. Uh, it's getting a little bit better. Hey, John's in the house. How you doing, Blind Whiskey Reviews? Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, if you guys haven't seen uh, John's channel, go check out Blind Whiskey Reviews. Uh, I love the way he, he reviews. He does everything is, is done blind. He has no idea what he's tasting. It's awesome. Uh, let me take a sip of water here. Trevor Wilson. Ah, it was filmed in Cleveland, but the town in the movie is Homan. <laughs> no way on the cherry cough syrup. Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, it's definitely cherry cough syrupy. Let's go to number two here. Number two has probably the um, the better nose and the um, mm. yeah that actually has really good flavor to it. Number two I really like. I think number two might be my leader in the clubhouse here. Mmm, really good. All right, let me go back to number three. Ah. Nope, 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 nope. I don't know what number three is, but it's last. It's dead last. <laughs> no, no denying. Number three is fourth place. Easy. Woo, that's awful. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> All right, let's go to number four here. Now, number four actually had the best nose of all of them. Number four, one on nose alone. But the flavor of it, the last time I had it, let me get a swig of water here. Mm. 
you know that's actually pretty good it's just it's just it's just flat the the flavors just don't do anything it's good it's easy tasting would probably be a really great mixer uh, a lot of these bottom shelf bourbons are um <laughs> my face said it all it's pee yeah it tasted like it yeah number four is pretty good it's just that it's it's just too flat but the nose on it actually puts it ahead for me a little bit uh over a or number one whichever that one is so so i'm going to rank them as um so number two number two here is gonna be my first place um number three is definitely dead last number four is second and uh number one here will be third place so i'm gonna grab the i have my results right here of what everything is so let's see here yeah so yeah so two four two four one and three let's see is that the yes you got it you got it william so, all right, so let's check out what my last place is. So last place here is letter B. And letter B was the early times. Wow, letter B was early times. So this was my last place. This one was awful. <laughs> um, so, which is, which is weird because I really enjoy uh, the early times bottled in bond. I think it's delicious. Uh, one of the most underrated bottled in bond bourbons. But uh, that cheap one is just... Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Let's go to my next one. Uh, so this is third place. Uh, this is letter A, which was Ancient Age. So Ancient Age was... Um, yeah, man, that was the... Uh, yeah, that one was good. It just... Uh, that was the... That was the, uh, the cough syrupy one that tasted like cherry cough syrup. Um, so that was early times. So we have Evan Williams and the Benchmark 8. Wow, Benchmark 8 making it to the top two. So let's see what uh, number two is. Number two is D, which is Benchmark, which makes letter C. Where is it? Evan Williams Black Label, numero uno. Hey, you won. <laughs> Yeah, Evan Lewis Black Label. I'm actually not surprised. I, I love this stuff. I think it's a great bottom shelf bourbon. So if you guys are looking for any bottom shelf bourbon, go with Evan Williams Black Label. It's it's really good. It's not going to obviously do anything flavor profile wise, but probably as a mixer and introduce someone into bourbon nice and easy. It's got all those classic notes that you love. It's got the, uh, the, the vanilla. It's got the oak. It's got a little bit of oak, not a lot of oak. Mostly vanilla and caramel. It's very sweet. But very pleasing. Good stuff. All right. That was fun. All right, guys. What do we got going on in the chat? Um, let's see. Oh, guys. So, uh, yeah. Quick story here. So, as I was, uh, as you can see, I did a lot of whiskey hunting uh, since I've been in New York. And um, one of the one of the craziest things that I, I that just happened today. So, um, we hit all these different stores and that's where I, you know, bought the, uh, the Kentucky owl and the, the Michter's 10. And I got really lucky finding those at retail. It was amazing. Um, so, so I'm in the car with my mom and we're kind of driving down the road and she, and she kind of looks over and says like, Hey, Hey Jay, this one's really close to, uh, this one's really close to the house. I've never been in this liquor store, so let's go check it out. So, uh, so we make the U-turn, we pull in now as I'm walking into the place, I could see it's a lot of wine, a lot of stuff on the right side, a ton of ton of wine, a ton of different types of um, uh, uh, liqueurs, flavored spirits. Uh, excuse me. Oh man, that uh, early times is coming up on me. <laughs> so, um, so I walk in and I'm kind of looking around. I'm not seeing much, and then I see the bourbon in the corner. Uh, so I immediately go over there, and they had some pretty nice, you know, pretty nice, good selections. Uh, prices were a little bit high. Uh, they had Blanton's on the shelf for about a hundred bucks. They had um, uh, they had a Garrison Brothers single barrel for two hundred dollars. Uh, so you know they had some good stuff, but pretty pricey. So I'm like, oh, I don't really see anything. So then um, I basically go to the front of the counter <clears throat> and I go, Hey, do you guys have any? And I look up 
And on this big tall shelf behind the cashier, on the shelf behind, in daylight, with this beaming light from heaven shining on it, was four bottles of William LaRue Weller, four bottles of uh, Tom uh, Handy from the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, uh, two bottles of Old Rip Van Winkle 10-year, and one bottle of um, Old Forester Birthday Bourbon from, uh, from this year, from 2018. So, obviously, my eyes light up like, you know, it's early Christmas morning. And um, I basically stare at, the, I stare at the at the shelf and I'm like, uh, uh, blah, 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 you know, because I'm freaking out. Because, you know, William Lerue Weller, uh, you know, BTAC and even some of the Pappy Bottles. You know, a lot of those are the holy grail for, you know, a lot of bourbon collectors and enthusiasts. You know, some people think they're overpriced, and you know, maybe they are. Yeah, you, know, you know, a little bit, but I think it, I think it's more the fact of someone trying to acquire one of them and actually have it on their own shelf or in their collection. That's what makes it so intriguing. So, um, uh, yeah. So I so I'm sitting there, and I, I, you know, the first thing I say is, you know, because William Lee Weller, if you guys have watched my shows, and a lot of you have, basically, that's the. The best bourbon I ever had. I, I tried it, you know, years ago, and uh, so I, I, you know, I say, um, um, can you can you grab that bottle for me and bring it down here right now? <laughs> so she puts it on the shelf, and I'm looking at it. It's a uh, 2018, uh, but the other two bottles behind it were from 2017. So she only had one from this year, uh, from the releases this year. The other two were from um, uh, last year. So I'm uh, so I ask her to ring it up, and she scans it, and it comes up five hundred dollars, and uh, that really kind of hurt my heart because I really wanted to buy it right then and there, uh, and it, it just killed me. The uh, the Tom uh, Handy was came in at three fifty, which was pretty high price. The the uh, birthday bourbon, the Old Forester, which was one of my favorite whiskeys that I tried this year, um, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was one of the better birthday bourbons that they have released in the in you know the last few years. Uh, just really good stuff. That came in at four hundred. You know, I thought for maybe three hundred, I would I would maybe go for it, but for four hundred, it was just too steep. It it was a lot. It it was it was very disheartening. But the fact to see those whiskeys just sitting on a shelf somewhere was. Just, you know, my eyes lit up like Christmas morning. It was kind of a sad story, but I did find a lot of other great stuff while I was here, so I couldn't complain. But seeing those whiskeys kind of being able to hold a William LaRue Weller for me was pretty incredible. Just at that price, I couldn't imagine spending the 500 on it, even though part of me wanted to because I wasn't sure if it was ever going to if I was ever going to get my hands on one again. So that was that was a little bit rough. Um, yeah, secondary market, Scott, definitely. Uh, drove that up a little bit. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Yeah, hell of a lucky find. Yeah, I felt like it was very lucky, but it was tough with those prices, man. Um, let's see. Don't quote me on that. I only saw it passing. Was there okay? Worth it? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> I would have paid the five hundred for the last year's. Oh, Texas Al, you would have. Yeah, a lot of people said that. I was doing some research after I saw both. Saw them both. A lot of people really swore by the one last year. So, um. You can buy Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, remember, guys, a couple weeks ago on the live, I did Elijah Craig Barrel Proof versus George T. Stag, and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof came out on top for me. So, is is five hundred dollars really worth it? I, I don't know. That's tough, man. Um, let's see. What did you pay? Oh, let's see. Stag is three hundred in Kansas. Yeah. See. I, I'm used to seeing kind of the stag and the William Lee Ruella go. Well, William Lee Ruella, I, I have seen go for about six, seven hundred on the secondary. So five hundred was kind of sounded right for me. Uh, if they had a stag for three hundred, I might have done that. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, 2017 William Lee Ruella was whiskey of the year in that one guy's Bible. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Texas Owl. That guy also, that same guy that you're talking about, Jim Murray, he also picked a Crown Royal one year for the Whiskey of the Year. So I don't know if you can really trust him or not. So, uh, yeah, 
pretty pretty crazy stuff. So well, that was kind of a fun story. It was just seeing those things just sitting on a shelf somewhere was pretty incredible. I'd never seen it before in my life, especially you know being kind of the avid bourbon hunter I am. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, do the last giveaway of the night. I have a, a question queued up for everybody here. So uh, let me just grab it here. Vacation. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me just pull it up so I can get my last question. So this question, guys, is for is about um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. So um, I found a really good, a cool question to ask everybody. So let me go here. Um, let me see here. Where's the question? I want to make sure I get the right one for you guys. Um, where is it? Let's see. <laughs> Some of these are so funny. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Is that it? Um, okay. Yeah. Perfect. So, so if you guys seen the movie, uh, it's, you know, one of the, my favorite parts of the movie, kind of the iconic, uh, well, there's a lot of iconic scenes in that movie, but really it's when he, you know, completely coats the house in lights. So when he, uh, when he decorated the house, uh, how many lights, uh, does he put up? What was the, what was the number? <laughs> Eric wait amazing quote yes so he says a he says a number uh, to how many lights he puts up uh, let's see waiting for it uh, oh wow jeez oh it's coming in Juan Quintanilla 25,000 you got it buddy Juan Quintanilla, you win the sample of, oh yes, the Weller 12, coming at you. Uh, I'm sending you guys two ounce samples too, so you guys get some, uh, some, some nice samples to kind of really enjoy the Weller 12, so it'll be amazing. Um, uh, Juan, I don't think I have your email yet. If you haven't yet, throw your email in the chat, please, so I can connect with you and get your contact info, and then I'll get your sample out as soon as I get back to New York, so it'll be great. Uh, Jason Coates said cereal wax. <laughs> yeah, that was his uh, that was his crazy invention that uh, that he did the, the the perfect cereal wax to make it look really shiny. Uh, so that's awesome, guys. So let's see. I'm trying to think if I have any other uh, announcements before I uh, kind of go off. So like I mentioned, guys, my next uh, I will be working on a top whiskeys of 2018 video uh, when I get back to uh, Ohio. Uh, I'm releasing my I, my uh, my review this Friday uh, is actually really cool. It's uh, so it's a New York uh, New York bourbon. It's the Kings County bottled and bond um, uh, bottled and bond bourbon. So that's made here locally in Brooklyn. Uh, they use all fresh New York ingredients. Uh, I won't do any spoiler alerts, but definitely check out that review. That'll be Friday. Uh, thanks, Juan. I got it. Awesome. Um, and then. I'm trying to see what else. Yeah, so my 2018, my best of, I'm going to be working on that. I'm definitely going to be trying to get these reviews in. Uh, I don't know if I'll have time to get to them before the end of the year. Uh, it's a lot of whiskey to review. <laughs> you know, meaning the Wichter's 10, the Michter's 10, and the Old Fitz uh, 9 year. I'm going to try to get into those two uh, before I do the uh, my top 20, uh, my top 5 of 2018. The only problem with that is, is that I like to sip on the bottle kind of a long time to see how it you know, how it goes over time to make sure that it's a, you know, a really great bottle, you know, kind of, you know, first impressions, first sips are always usually pretty good. Uh, but as the bottle gets down, how's the whiskey taste? What does it turn into? So I may not have time to include these, but I have a pretty good idea of what my top five would be for 2018. I might do top seven because it's been tough trying to pick those out. Um, so again, guys, like I said, uh, if you haven't yet, uh, if you, 
if you can, check out my Patreon page. Check out the uh, the tiers I have if you really feel like supporting the channel, seeing where this could go. I really want you guys involved. really want you guys kind of you know, joining me in this process of building this channel and, and you know, what it what it could be uh, between the news, the reviews, uh, the guest stars uh, I plan on having on. Uh, so upcoming uh, guests I have, guys, is the master distiller from Woodford Reserve, Elizabeth McCall. Uh, I met her on Thursday, uh, last Thursday in Kentucky. She has agreed to come on for to do a cool interview. We're going to be talking about everything from whiskeys to uh, the aging barrel uh chemistry she is so knowledgeable she's amazing um also we're going to be talking with uh the author of um a great a great book called bourbon justice um he also has the uh the uh whatchamacallit the blog called sip and corn um uh let me get to uh let me see here i'm trying to see when he's going to be coming on um, let's see here. I think he did send me an email here. Um, well, I, I don't know yet, but his name is Brian Howard, guys. He's, uh, he's an amazing author. Uh, Bourbon Justice is all about, uh, how the whiskey, uh, the back in the day, all the whiskey laws and, and all the legality of it, uh, came into, how it shaped uh, the laws that we have now for patents and, and different products. It's an amazing book. I highly recommend it. if you guys haven't tried it yet. It's called Bourbon Justice. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Go check it out. He's going to be on the channel. I'm going to be talking everything from his favorite bourbons uh, about his book, the different interviews he's done. Uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be pretty great. So appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, if I don't uh, talk to you again, I'm going to try to get a live in next week. We'll see. But if I don't talk to you again, Merry Christmas. Really appreciate it. And like I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. Cheers, guys, and great to see you. Take care.